Hello, I'm Barry Putt, author of the book Alice, Life Behind the Counter in Mel's Greasy Spoon, a guide to the feature film, the TV series, and more. I'm excited to talk to you today about the book. My presentation will include a background on how the book was written, insight into the development of the TV series, an Alice trivia quiz, a virtual book signing, and an audience Q&A. I encourage you to post questions in the comments section under the live stream during the presentation, and I'll answer your questions later in my presentation. If you're watching this after the recording has ended, I also encourage you to post questions as I will be checking back from time to time and responding to questions. So I'd like to start with a question for you. How many wait staff did Alice Hyatt work with at Mel's Diner during the TV series? The number and also their names. So give it some thought and write your answers in the comment sections he here on Facebook. And while you're thinking about that, I'm going to move on to talk about a few other things, and then I'll come, I'll come back and I'll, I'll give you the answer. So some background about me. I'm a playwright, author, and screenwriter. And some of my productions are on the screen here. They include the telly award-winning TV series, The Wisdom Tree, the virtual reality series, Marin's Rock, and the film Departures. I've written children's audiobooks and over 40 audio dramas, including The Holly Tree Inn for Colonial Radio Theater. I'm currently writing a feature-length screenplay for Running Fountain Productions, among other projects. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, so a little bit more about me. I was born in Buffalo, New York. Now this, this slide here is actually just represented. I'm not pictured in any of these photos. But to the left, that's a picture of Buffalo, New York, which is known for their bad snowstorms. Um, I was born there, but I've lived most of my life in New Jersey. In addition to being a writer, I teach English and story development courses at several local colleges here in New Jersey. I'm a Lucy fan. I like trying new things, and my latest is horseback riding. The center top picture is a, an example of horseback riding, and the center lower is uh, one of the colleges I teach at. And I love technology, gadgets, language, and comic books. And on the right is one of the comic books from my collection. Uh, the Hardy Boys has a, a certain significance, which I'm going to talk about a little later in my presentation here. So I live with my rascally tuxedo cat, Ricky McGillicuddy Putt, who, if he could speak, would be saying stow it, just like Mel does on Alice. Now let's get back to the question I had, uh, I had asked a few moments ago. How many wait staff had appeared on the TV series Alice? So in the center here, you have Alice Hyatt. And on the, on the left, you have Vera, Bell, Flo, and Jolene. And those were the primary wait staff that Alice worked with through the nine seasons of Alice. But if you go to the right, there, there is Mel's girlfriend, Marie. She was a waitress probably for about 15 minutes. And she worked um, after Flo left and just prior to Belle coming to work. That's where she was a waitress. And then there's Blanche the robot. Blanche was uh, on for one episode when Mel wanted to downsize and um, let the waitresses go for that episode. And there's also below Kenny. He was on for one episode. He was the only waiter that ever worked officially in the, in the diner. And um, that episode dealt with fairness and pay. He was getting paid more money than the waitresses. So seven wait staff worked with Alice during the run of the series. So I'd like to give you a little bit of book background about how the book came about. In 2017, I contracted with Bear Manor Media to write the book. Bear Manor Media specializes in books on film and TV. 
and biographies about actors and actresses within the film and in TV industry. Now, the publisher gave me a year to write the book. And as soon as the contract phase ended, I immediately began research. There were three types of research that I did. The first was book and print research. And for that, I went to my local library, and specifically the college library that I teach at. They were extremely helpful in helping me get over 350 books, book sections, articles, and unpublished documents as well. Uh, the second type of research I did was interviewing cast and crew. I reached out to all of, all of the living people that were working on Alice, everyone that I could find, and I set up as many interviews as I was able to. As many people that got back to me, I set up interviews with them. I also used personal observation of the film and TV series. And what I mean by that is, is that I watched all 202 episodes of Alice and all 29 episodes of Flow at least three times, taking notes on all episodes. And I combined my observations with additional research. And that made up the uh, episode logs, the trivia questions, and the notes sections of the book. Now, just a little bit about this slide here. On your left, the document that is headed Linda Lavin, that's an example of the book and pre print research that I did. So I would first read each article and highlight things that I thought was pertinent and might be used in the book. And then I did what I call indexing. That is, um, you can see that handwritten. It says Linda Lavin Bio Women's Advocacy Work. So what that means is, is that I thought that this would be important in the bio section for Linda Lavin, and specifically in the section about her women's advocacy work. The other article on this page that you see a portion of that has the caption, Chris Christofferson and Ellen Burstyn, is just another example of um, highlighting, es essentially. I, once I read all the book and print research, I took all of the quotes and the indexing information, and I put it into a Word document, which made it extremely easy at that point to, um, to find anything I needed to help write the book just by doing a search within the document. So that's a little bit about the process. And as I mentioned, I searched out you know, every cast and crew member I could find and contacted them. And on this page, this is an example of, to, your, to the right, that's the first version of the episode log. So I would sit in front of the TV and write, handwrite the synopsis for each episode, along with any specific notes uh, that, that stood out to me. Ultimately, I, I, I typed it into the, the computer. And after that, then I revised it. And it's, it's vastly different than what you see in it on the page here. And then in the center, that is an example of some handwritten notes from interviews. This one here is specifically some interview notes that I had from when I uh, spoke with Lucy Lee Flippin. So Lucy played Fran in the TV series Flo. Fran was Flo's sister, and she also played in one episode of Alice where she played a bank customer. Now, 40 years had passed since this series was first on, on television, and when I was talking to many of the people, sometimes their memories were hazy. Um, I only included verified fact in the book. As I was working on the research phase of the, of the book, there was somebody that just kept coming back to me that was really essential to this whole project here, and that was Robert Getchell. He, had, uh, he wrote the screenplay for Alice Doesn't Live Any Anymore, and he had passed away just two weeks before I signed to write the book. So despite how integral he was, there was hardly any information available on him. And I had a lot of questions. How did he become a writer? How did he come up with the idea behind Alice? Was he involved in the TV series at all? And through all the research that I had, you know, in those 350 plus articles and, and books, etc., all of that information, they all had the same kind of general information, and it, they, didn't, they didn't answer those questions. So as I continued to, to review the rest of the research, I found just one single citation for an article 
in a journal called In the American Grain. And that was an article with, with essentially a Q&A with Robert Getchell, and it answered all of my questions. So it was a wonderful find. Uh, in fact, it was, I found it to be so valuable that I included it in the further reading section in the back of the book. Robert Getchell is pictured here um, in this article. This is just the first page. It was uh, several pages long, the article. It was written in about 1976 or 1977, around that time, and it's the only known article that features an in-depth interview with Robert Getchell about his, his life and his writing. He went on after Alice to write Mommy Dearest and several other well-known films. I believe his last film was The Client in the early 1990s. I had mentioned earlier that um, I'm a Lucy fan, and I was really excited to learn during the research phase of this book about what I call the Lucy connection. There was a strong connection between I Love Lucy and the TV series Alice. In the upper left corner there, that's Bob Carroll Jr. and Madeline Davis. They were writers that worked with Lucy from her first radio show, My Favorite Husband, then they worked with her on I Love Lucy, and they wrote for her all the, through all of her TV series, including her final show, Life with Lucy, in the mid-1980s, which occurred just after Alice went off the air. They were instrumental in really helping the show Alice to develop. They came in at the beginning of season two. Season one, this series was trying to find a solid grounding, they, and they ultimately came in and helped the show find that grounding, helped develop characters, and, and flush things out. They brought in with them uh, writers, directors, especially Mark Daniels. Now, Mark Daniels had, had directed quite a few episodes of I Love Lucy, and they brought him in to Alice. And on Alice, he directed about half of the episodes on Alice throughout the years, not consecutively, but throughout the years. And um, typically he was brought in because he was good with directorial logic to help um, a, if a script needed it to be flushed out in a directorial fashion. He was good with that and also more complicated and complex events and scripts. He was good with that, so they always relied on him for that. In terms of actors, the most notable actor from I Love Lucy that appeared on the, se the series Alice was Desi Arnaz. And he's pictured here on the top right in an episode where he played Paco, a flamboyant photographer and kind of a, a Don Juanish character who came to visit Alice in one episode. So there's more about the Lucy connection. This is an overview of it. And, and if you're interested in learning more about it, I encourage you to look in the chapter on the Alice TV series in the book. So as I was writing the book, my original concept was to focus the book on the Alice sitcom, a background of that, and then also to feature the feature film and tell how that came about. About halfway through writing the book, I decided that it was really important to include the series flow as well. That kind of completed what I call the Alice trilogy, the feature film and then the two TV series, Alice and Flow. And that was the main reason, and I think it's an important one, so that we get everything within the world of Alice in, in, the, in, one, in one source. Some other behind-the-scenes aspects um, about the evolution of writing the book. Uh, the Alice, uh, sorry, Linda Lavin's bio was actually two pages longer. And just before the book went to print, I decided to cut out two pages that focused um, in great detail about Linda Lavin's women's advocacy work. I felt that her bio was, that information would have been great if I was writing a biography about Linda Lavin's life, but in terms of the style of bios that were in this book, it was too detailed. So I, when, in removing those two pages, then it was consistent with the style of the bio for the rest of the book. Also, in the Alice TV series chapter, there was a section I really wanted to include about the history of the evolution 
of how mothers were depicted on TV from the beginning of television up until the 1970s when Alice came on the air. I kept trying to find a place to fit that in the chapter, but it, it just always felt out of place there. So what I did was I cut it and I made it, um, I put it in the introduction, which I think is really um, the best place for it. And I flushed, out, I flushed that section out to really make it the introduction. Uh, you know, Alice in the feature film, she's a mother. That's one of the main important roles that she plays among others. So that introduction there really serves Alice in both feature film and TV series. So in December of 2018, I turned the manuscript into the publisher. And then for the next eight months, I worked with an editor to tighten the text and proofread and a graphic designer who created the cover. On this slide here, I just wanted to point out a few things. On the right, this is at my editor's notes. Anything that has blue and crossed out are things that they suggested that I delete. And I pretty much went with what, they, what their recommendations were. Anything that you see that has a blue highlight and then a number JC 45, let's see, 46 and 47, that was, if I clicked on that, I would get a bubble with more information. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to include that additional information on the slide here, um, but that would give me information about how I needed to expand or revise things. There was close to 500 different aspects that they were recommending that I revise in some way, which was um, a good deal to focus on, but I think really important. An example, just so you can have a better context here, um, in Linda Lavin's bio, it was known that Linda had went to the College of William and Mary, and in her freshman year there, she was cast in a major role in the school's play. Now, that the roles usually went to the graduating seniors. She was the first freshman to be cast in a lead role in the school play. My editor said it would be really important to include the name of the play and the role that she performed within that play. I had tried to find that information before, but similar to, as I mentioned before, with Robert Getchell, there just seemed to be the same summary information available through those 350 plus you know, resources I had. So it took quite a bit of digging, but I ultimately was able to find out the play and the role that she played within it, and that's in the book. So I'm mentioning it here because sometimes as you're reading, you think, oh, you know, this is an interesting detail, but you may not realize um, that it takes a, you know, a good deal of research to find out those details. And on your left is an example of the cover. It's actually the first draft of the cover that the book graphic designer presented to me. So I really liked the coloring, the you know, that kind of salmon color that was in the picture. Um, but it says Alice by Barry M. Putt Jr. And I felt that that was not very clear. I didn't want people to think that I had written a fiction, a fictive novel about Alice or that I was claiming to have, you know, written Alice. So I asked them to, you know, please to shrink the photo and then put the full title, you know, Alice, Life Behind the Counter in Mel's Greasy Spoon, and then the parenthetical, a guide to the feature film, the TV series, and more. And then once that was done, that was that pretty much finalized the cover. What you're also seeing far left is the spine of the book. So that you know that wasn't on the cover. That's the side. And then the back, um, that the back changed quite a bit. But as in terms of the cover, those were just a few adjustments that were needed. So an overview of the book. Uh, the book is a history of the development of the feature film and the sitcoms Alice and Flo. It contains 120 question fan quiz, episode logs for both series, two recipes for Mel's famous chili. Uh, one of them was sent to a, on a recipe card to anyone that wrote into the show. And the second was derived from when, the rare occasion when Mel would talk about his famous chili during the series. Both of them are complete recipes, and both of them use very different ingredi ingredients. So if you've always wondered what Mel's famous chili tasted like, or if you're interested in 
in trying a few different chili recipes. I encourage you to try it. They're, they're both in the book. And um, I'd love to hear what you think of them. Also in the book is the history of the real Mel's Diner. The, so Mel's Diner is in Phoenix, Arizona. And the photo here, which was taken in January of 2019, is of the sign that was a copy of it was used within the TV series. All of the photos that I'm including in the presentation here are alternate photos. They were, uh, so anything that's in the book is a different version. And the version in the book of this specific photo has a full view of the actual diner, which is out of view in this photo. But I thought this was a great photo of the sign. So those are just some, some of the things. There's much more in the book as well, but those are some highlights that you'll find in the book. At this point, I'd like to do just a short reading for you from the book. If you have a copy of the book, you're welcome to follow along on page 58, or you can just listen. Polly Holiday made it a point not to see Alice doesn't live here anymore because she wanted her portrayal of Flo to be original to her and not influenced by the movie. She used what she called puzzle solving to understand her character. This entailed reviewing the script and constructing a background for her character based on it. The dialogue in the Alice scripts stated that Flo was born in the South. Holiday combined different traits and attributes from people she knew growing up in Alabama to craft Flo's persona. To help her look the part, she donned a wig and chewed gum. The dialogue her character spoke in the script made it clear that Flo didn't have much education. She had dropped out of school to enter marriage that didn't last. She had been married twice since then. Her lack of education made her question her abilities. She took the waitress job because it was what her education level afforded her. She compensated for her lack of self-confidence by masking her doubt with a strong exterior. Her mothering nature towards Alice suggested that Flo was the oldest sibling in her family. Holiday had seen women like Flo working as cashiers and at truck stops and understood them. They tended to be engaging and extroverted and had a great sense of humor. The writers on Alice found the backstory Holiday created for her character to be rich with detail. They incorporated most of it into the episodes of the show, which helped to make the series more engaging overall. So that's just a little bit of a taste of how the actors, along with other people working on the show, helped to develop the show during the first season. And there's a lot more where that, where that came from in, in the chapter on Alice. So now I'd like to do a, a short trivia qu quiz with you. Um, how this will work will be similar to how the first question I asked w was. And I'm going to read the questions to you, and I encourage you to enter your responses into the comment section here on Facebook, because I'd love to hear the different answers that you have. And then I'll come back in a, in a little while, and I'll, I'll go over the answers with you and give you a little bit more context when, when I give the answers as well. So question one, in the series Alice, Tommy played what in high school and college? Number two, what was the name of Mel's establishment in the first episode of the series Alice? Was it A, Mel's restaurant, B, Mel's diner, C, Mel and Ruby's cafe, or D, none of the above? Number three, in Alice, who never learned how to drive? And question number four, in the series Flow, which major character left midway through season two? So take a few moments and write your answers down here on Facebook, and I'll get back to answer these questions in just a few moments. So the virtual book signing. I first like just to let you know that Alice Life Behind the Counter and Mel's Greasy Spoon is available at bookstores throughout the world, uh, including Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. It's available in a digital format, soft cover, and hard cover. 
Other stores, Kobo, which is a, a large platform for digital material in Canada. It's available at Target and Walmart and Waterstones, which is a large bookstore in the UK, and also many other stores. This, is, this list is just representative. It's available in other stores besides that. If you'd like to purchase a signed copy of the book, please email me at barryemputtjr.com forward slash contact. And everyone that purchases a signed copy of the book will also receive an Alice postcard and a pen. If you already have a copy of the book, thank you, and I'll be glad to send a signed book plate that, you can, that can be inserted on the first page of your book. So pricing for the author signed books includes postage. And soft cover is $30, hard cover is $36, and the book plate is free. These, these prices are for the US. They may vary slightly outside of the US. But if you're interested, I encourage you please just to email me at the um, address above, and I'll let you know if there's any difference. A little bit about my current book that I'm writing. It's called The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew on Film, TV, and Stage. It will be published in 2021 by Bear Manor Media and feature interviews with Tracy Ryan, who played Nancy Drew on the TV in the 1995 TV series Nancy Drew, Parker Stevenson, who played Frank Hardy in the 1977 TV series, Michael Klein, who produced Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys. There were two separate series in 1995, and many other people that, are, that worked on the, the shows and the films and TV series as well. The list that you see here are confirmed people, but I'm actively searching out for more. And there are, and they're not listed here, but there are other confirmed people that I will be interviewing. The book will consist of one chapter for each film and TV series and include a behind the scenes of how the film or TV series came about, biographies on major people associated with each film and TV series, and then an episode log for the TV series themselves. If you're interested in learning more about the book, I encourage you to go to Facebook, The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew on Film and TV State, sorry, <laughs> The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew on Film, TV and Stage page, and please like it and follow that page. I will be adding when I do interviews, I will be posting when I've done an interview, and not all of the interviews, but several of them on an ongoing basis. I'll also give an advanced preview of the cover art for the, the book, and you'll learn um, in advance when the book will be released. I'll be putting that information exclusively just on that Facebook page. If you're interested in learning about other Alice book events and promotions, or more about other productions of mine, and the, the upcoming Nancy Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew book, I encourage you to please join my mailing list. All you need to do is just go to barryemputtjr.com forward slash contact and let me know that you'd like to be on the mailing list and I'll add you. Um, if at some point you decide you would like to be removed, you can. it's easy to unsubscribe and I will be only sending information on a periodic basis when there's something pertinent to let you know about so you won't be uh, bombarded with emails. So let's get back to the trivia quiz and see how you did. So uh, question number one. In the series Alice, Tommy played basketball in high school and college. In fact, it was a major reason why he was in college. He was a, he was a pretty good player. Um, question two. What was the name of Mel's establishment in the first episode of the series Alice? Uh, the correct answer is C, Mel and Ruby's Cafe. Mel and Ruby's Cafe was the name of the establishment in the feature film, and it carried over to the pilot or slash first episode of the TV series as well. If you look closely in the window of the entrance to the, to the establishment, there is a small sign that says Mel and Ruby's Cafe that you can see when, when people are entering and exiting the restaurant. Now, starting with season two, it was renamed to Mel's Diner, and it remained called Mel's Diner uh, 
except for a f very few rare occasions. It was always called Mel's Diner for the rest of the se series. Question three, in Alice, Vera never learned how to drive. In the feature film, her father would pick her up or drive her home on his motorcycle. And in the TV series, she would walk or find some other mode of transportation. Question four, in the series flow, which major character left midway through season two? Miriam Willoughby. Is, uh, she left midway through season two. Miriam was Flo's best friend since high school. And when Flo returned to town, she opened a, a tavern called Flo's Yellow Rose. And Miriam began to work with her as a bookkeeper and sometimes waitstaff at Flo's Yellow Rose. Now during season two, Miriam was having a, another child and her doctor recommended that she have um, intense bed rest. So she had to leave her job and stay at home all the time. And that was the reason why she was uh, no longer seen. Her character was no longer seen in the series. So I hope you did well on the quiz, or at least had fun. That's the most important thing. If you like trivia questions, I encourage you, you know, to go to the book. There's 120 questions divvied up between the feature film. The, the bulk of them are on the Alice TV series. And then there's a good portion on the TV series flow as well. So at this point, I encourage you to, if, if you have any specific questions about anything in my presentation, about the Alice series, about the book, please type them into Facebook. And I'm going to um, switch over on a, a separate computer that I have here. And I will be answering your questions. So that may, there may be a, a brief delay while I pull out um, another computer that I have right near, right here and look at some of your questions. So while I'm in the process of doing this, I just wanted to let you know that today's presentation was done as a webinar. Um, I thought that the slides would be more important for you to see. They had more value information than just seeing me for the whole presentation without the slides. And Facebook only gives you one option or the other. But if you're interested in seeing, um, having a more interactive presentation, I would be glad to do like maybe a five or ten minute at the most brief presentation on Zoom and then have a Q&A with you where we can actually see each other. If that's of interest to you, please let me know in the comment sections here. And I will, if there's a, if there's a large enough interest, I will definitely uh, schedule something soon. So everyone, my computer is taking its time. I'm going to give it just another moment, and I'm hoping to get to your questions. I'm sorry, I am seem to be having some kind of a technical issues with my other computer and it's not opening the questions right now. So again, please let me know if you'd like me to do a, a live Q&A with you and I would be glad to set that up if there's strong interest. Um, I will also answer any questions directly on Facebook after the presentation ends today. So if you have typed questions, I'll be glad to answer them after the presentation. So thank you for attending. I hope that you learned some, gained some insight about the, the development of the book and also the TV series. 
Have a good day. Bye.